Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I say good afternoon, members. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support this simple resolution in granting the valued value added tax exemption to the National Trust. But Mr. Speaker, my contribution is extremely brief and I want to reference, in fact, I would like to, to Mr. Speaker speak to the fact that sometimes the Prime Minister, even making his presentation, he doesn't need anybody to defend or protect him. But Mr. Speaker, I listened to the presentation by the leader of the opposition and clearly the Prime Minister, the member for Castries East and the National Trust was directly attacked with this simple resolution. And that happened when the member, the leader of the opposition made reference to the quid pro quo principle as it relates to granting of VAT, suggesting that there is something of value that the Prime Minister would receive by granting and asking the question. Mr. Speaker, Making that presentation in the way that he did highlighted the fact that certainly the leader of the opposition has problem with the National Trust. But the Prime Minister and the member for Castries East sitting in the cabinet with him has decided that he's not going to war with persons. He's not going to fight agencies. I'm not a lawyer. And if there's anything of value being given in return by the National Trust, in return to granting VAT, I am sure the member for Viewford South would agree with me, not all gifts are illegal. And that if they decide to work out the, 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 the differences in terms of how they operate the trust, that certainly would be good to grant, a good basis for granting VAT. But instead, the leader of the opposition spoke of the fact that they are not ready. He highlighted that they have two responsibilities, conservation and property management, a commercial activity. Mr. Speaker, that certainly highlighted the fact that the leader of the opposition was grossly wrong to stop the subvention because he highlighted that there were two functions. And if he recognized that there were two functions, he should have at least reduced the subvention, recognizing there's an important function of the National Trust even when he was in power as against stopping it completely. Mr. Speaker, the member of the leader of the opposition highlighted in his presentation the role of professionals. And he spoke of what professionals are saying. He referenced professionals as it relates to healthcare. He highlighted um, professionals in, in other areas where he spoke. But I listened to the leader of the opposition speak at times and he takes down pro the very professionals as he referenced at one time. He speaks against them another time, like when he speaks of the Hall of Justice, as if there were no professionals involved. Of course, the National Trust are professionals. And when you are dealing with professionals, you will not always agree with them. I am one that subscribes to conservation. I have an appreciation for securing everything that's of value, that's what we consider that has age, that has seen many days. But Mr. Speaker, it's costly to conserve buildings. Conservation is an expensive undertaking. And I understand why the National Trust at this time may ask to exclude VAT from goods and services imported or locally available. Mr. Speaker, if the, 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 the National Trust is interested in a professional assessing a building at this time in terms of its structural integrity, in terms of how it can be conserved, it would require monies to do so. And the National Trust is saying that the architects or the engineers who may put VAT on their, on their bill, we are asking you to remove VAT so that we can hire more professionals to assist us in conservation. This is simple. And I see no need to ask the Prime Minister what is the National Trust giving you in return for allowing VAT exemption. But Mr. Speaker, when I project that question down the road, will the leader of the opposition ask to the Prime Minister when 
the Prime Minister will grant VAT to the medical, for medical equipment, what is he getting in return? When other entities will come to the Prime Minister and ask for VAT exemption and he consider it whether in full or in part, will that same question be asked? Will the leader of the opposition continue to impute improper motives for every transaction that is brought before this house? And I saw this one was a classic example. That was way out on the off stump. And certainly when the ball is, when they bowl balls way off, you sometimes allow it to pass. But I certainly could not sit here and listen to a genuine request for VAT exemption for an entity that is so important to our development of our special development and be asked questions that way. Mr. Speaker, I support the work of the National Trust even before I was an elected member. I believe in it, and I believe it was, it was a gross error to have demolished the prisons. And there are a lot of buildings around, around the city of Castries that I personally will be a champion to protect them. Every brick at the, the pigeon point is important. And if the National Trust has expressed a concern about the number of persons coming to jazz, it's reasonable to express that. But of course, we will have a conversation with them and resolve it. Because we need to protect what is of value. So we cannot dismiss the National Trust. They are important to us, a very important agent in the development of our place. Mr. Speaker, I've seen so many buildings of value disappear on our landscape. Rain on a number of buildings around the city of Castries that I would walk by, I've seen that disappear. Thank God today I can behold the beauty of our central library. And of course, what is left, we need to preserve it. So the VAT allowance that is made to the National Trust is in order. And it is not for the leader of the opposition to get something of value. It is, for, it is an investment in the landscape so that the people of St. Lucia receive value for the role of the, of the National Trust. And Mr. Speaker, finally, I think I will say to the, to, the, to the fact that the Prime Minister has his heart in the right place. Because the question being asked by the leader of the op opposition, or will he ask the National Trust to submit a plan as to how they're going to manage, how they're going to raise revenue, the Prime Minister understands that the primary role of the National Trust is conservation. And therefore, consistent with what I think the, 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 at, on Sunday when, when the member for the member for, 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 for I think the prime, former Prime Minister of St. Vincent spoke to the personality and character of the Prime Minister. I recalled that he referenced Michael. Somebody would love justice and show mercy. So yes, there may be issues with the National Trust, but the Prime Minister used the opportunity when the National Trust approached him to show justice and mercy, to not only reinstate the subvention, but to provide VAT removal on goods and services. That is important. And had the former leader of opposition did not starve the National Trust for five years. There probably would not have been a need for such. But the decadence of buildings, and of course, when you take the buildings that need to be maintained, the fact for five years, this, nothing could have been done. Exponentially, more need to be invested in this time. So reinstatement of the subvention certainly is not adequate to maintain or to respond to our conservation responsibility in this country. Of course, the Nat National Trust want to be even more proactive. And maybe had there been a subvention, they would have been more proactive in terms of preventing the, the prison from, from going down. 
Mr. Speaker, when there was a fire many years ago in this prison, I was an employee at the Ministry of Planning, and I had the opportunity at the instruction of a particular minister to go and assess the damage at this prison. And for the first time, I went down and I remember walking through the gallows and I was asking the officers to explain to me the structure of the gallows and how it operates. And I saw architecture and design that is that I never ever imagined. Have you ever considered, and I recall Mr. Speaker, the last set of hangings that, that, that happened at this prison, I was a child living in Black Mali. And when the trap doors opened and the noise went through castries, only when I saw the gallows doors, I recognized what made the noise. That is not a value to preserve so that persons could understand what happened in the city of castries before. That is not a value. So, so when you, you have to be St. Lucian enough to recognize value in our heritage. You need to be St. Lucian more than ordinary to recognize what is important. And I'm saying that there are some things about us that need to be preserved. And it is that that the, rec that the, the Prime Minister recognized that reinstating of the subvention is not adequate. But providing that so that exponentially the National Trust can address some of the immediate problems is what is needed. So, of course, Mr. Speaker, I do take my seat, but recognizing that the Prime Minister continues to show justice and mercy as it, as it relates to the development of this country. Thank <laughs> you.